This is part three in our series of videos entitled Dimensional Analysis. In part one, we showed you how you derive the units for the answers for some common physics equations. In part two, we showed you how you do unit conversion and dimensional analysis. And in this part, we're going to show you how you come up with the units for some common constants in physics equations. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When we look at our YouTube analysts, we see that so many people who watch our videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe and support our channel. Click the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, leave a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. And we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials where you can find our Teacher by Teacher website. The link is in the description below. Whether you're looking for example problems, practice problems with all of the answers, notes, puzzles, and online labs that you can do with some of the PGT interactive simulations. It's all there. Check it out. The link is in the description below. And we're going to go over six different examples for the units for some common physics constants. And the first one, as you can see here, is the gravitational constant, G. And that comes from Newton's law of universal gravitation, which says that the force of gravity is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of one of the objects times the mass of the other objects divided by the square of the distance between them. Now, all we're going to do is solve this equation for g. And you can see if we solve that equation for g, we get that it's the force times the square of the distance between them and divided by the mass of one of the objects times the mass of the other. And all we're going to do then is put the units in and see what the units are for g. And you can see in this case that the units for g are newtons because the units for force are newtons. And the distance is measured in meters, so we have meters squared. And then we multiply the two masses, and we get kilograms squared. And those are the units for the gravitational constant. And in fact, the gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared kilogram squared. Okay, We can do something very similar for Coulomb's law and the Coulomb constant, which is k. Coulomb's law looks very similar. It just says that the electric force, the force electric, is equal to K, Coulomb's constant, times the charge of one of the objects times the charge of the other, divided by the square of the distance between them. Once again, we're going to solve for K, and that gives us that K is equal to the force times the square of the distance between the objects, divided by the charge of one, multiplied by the charge of the other. And therefore, you come up with Newton meters squared, Coulomb squared. Okay, so that is the, those are the units for Coulomb's constant k, and in fact, Coulomb's constant is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared Coulomb squared. Okay, that's number two. Now, for number three, where I think we're going to be talking about specific heat and C, we want to know what are the units for specific heat, and this is the equation where we have those units. This is a common equation. The change in heat is equal to the mass of the object times its specific heat times the change in temperature of that object. And we're just going to solve now for C. And we get that C is therefore equal to the change in heat divided by the mass times the change in temperature. And that gives us that the units are joules per gram degree Celsius. All right, so those are the units for the specific heat constant. And every material has its own specific heat. And for example, water has a specific heat of 4.186 joules per gram per degree Celsius. That means it takes 4.186 joules to change one gram of water, to change the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Okay, so I think that was number three. Now for number four, we are going to do the ideal gas constant. Now there's a lot, there's lots of different, not lots of, but there's several different common ideal gas constants. We're going to use PV equals NRT with a capital R like that. And this is the, the constant that we want to find the units for. And so we're going to solve that for R. And that's going to be PV, which is the pressure times the volume, divided by N. N is the number of molecules, or the N, the number of particles, times the temperature. And if we do that, we get that the pressure, in this case, can be measured in atmospheres. The volume is liters. N is the number of molecules or the number of particles, and that uh, the unit for that is the mole, and then the temperature is typically measured in this case in degrees Kelvin. Okay, so that are those are the units for the gas constant. Now there are other gas constants that are used in the ideal gas law, but that is one of them, and those are the units. That's how you come up for the units for that one. 
Okay, now we're going to have the permeability of free space, which is mu zero. And this uh, constant is used in, in several different equations, common equations, but here we have mu zero. And this is the equation for the magnetic field strength from a wire that has a current flowing through it and a certain distance from the wire. So we have the magnetic field strength uh, at a distance from a wire, and the wire has to have a current flowing through it. And we want to know what are the units for this constant mu variable, mu zero, which we call the permeability of free space. So once again, we're going to solve for mu zero, and we get mu zero is equal to B, the magnetic field strength, times two times pi times R, which that's the distance from the wire to the point where you're measuring the magnetic field strength, divided by the current. Okay, so in this case, we are going to be solving for this constant, and we're going to put the units in. Now, the units are, uh, for the magnetic field, is a Tesla. There's no units for 2 and there's no units for pi, but this is M. So it's just Tm, and the units for the current are the ampere. Okay, so therefore, that are, those are the units for the permeability of free space, and that's from the equation for the magnetic field strength from a current carrying wire. And that unit has the value of 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meter ampere, per ampere. Okay, so we got one more here. And this time we're going to do the permittivity of free space, which is sigma 0. And this is used in the equation for the capacitance of a capacitor, which says that the capacitance of a capacitor is equal to uh, the permittivity of free space times the area of the plates divided by the distance between the plates. So once again, we're going to solve for sigma zero, and we get that sigma zero is therefore going to be equal to the capacitance times the distance between the plates divided by the area. And if we want to put the units in for that, we get that the units for capacitance, if you remember, are farads, which is abbreviated with an F. The distance between the plates is M, because it's measured in meters. And then the area would be meters squared. And you can see we can cancel here, actually, because we have meters on top and two meters on the bottom. So the units for sigma zero is just farad per meter, or F over M, like that. OK, so there you go. We went over how to find the units for six different common physics uh, constants using the equations in which they're used. And I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Please subscribe to our channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. Get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Please give us a thumbs up. Please leave us a nice positive comment. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.